Hi friends, my name is Kenton Whitman and together with my family, we aim to share wilderness skills, mindfulness practices, wild edible plants, family adventures, and skills that break you free from the limits of civilized life. Join us by subscribing to our channel and joining our YouTube family. Hi friends, wow, this is a cool, windy, wet Wisconsin spring. I, yeah, I'm not sure if I remember one quite like this before, but you know, it did get warm the other day, warm enough for the kids at least, <laughs> who are often more resilient than the adults, to go swimming in one of the local streams, very cold. But we were at that stream because we were searching for a special wild edible called hopness or groundnut. Now, even though this is an amazing wild edible, a lot of people haven't heard about it. And that's a shame because this is a, a super abundant wild edible that is probably one of the closest things to the legendary wild potato that people go searching for. And by that, I mean that it is a, a starchy vegetable and it is special because you think of evening primrose, you think of the thistles, you think of wapato. All of these are really going to be seasonal spring and autumn. But this guy, the hotness, the groundnut, is pretty much available. Samuel Thayer, the, the famous <laughs> forager up here, he says anytime the ground isn't frozen, you can go and get this. And so you can look for it in the spring like we did here. And I'll show you what we're looking for when we go looking in the spring. You can go looking in the summer when you're going to have actually the leaves and the flowers and the beans on there. So I'm not going to have summer pictures probably to show you, but you will be able to see the vines. And the spring vines are going to also show you what to look for in the warmer winter months or the very late autumn months. But you're going to get to see my family try this. To me, this is delicious. One of my favorite wild edibles. It is, so it's a starch, so it's going to be calorically abundant. And it's, it's sweet. It has a sweet, you'll hear what the family compares it to. They say it tastes like peanuts. So it does have a nuttiness. Thoreau famously said it's, it's sweet and nutty. And absolutely that describes how this tuber tastes. It's super fun to find because it grows on strings. You're going to have tuber and then a little string and a tuber and a little string. So it's super fun to find and hunt down. And where it grows, usually along river banks, stream banks, these are fun places to explore where you can go fishing, you can be crossing logs over the river, swimming. These are adventurous. They are abundant when you find them and delicious. Now there is a cautionary note with this one, actually a couple cautionary notes. First of all, and this is again, according to Samuel Thayer, they contain a, an anti-nutrient that interferes with protein synthesis. And so it is important to cook this before you eat it for that reason. It also, like any uncooked bean, is going to give you a lot of gas if you eat it raw. I have not tried it raw, taking this from Sam, uh, but I'm gonna believe him because he definitely knows his stuff and he actually eats and prepares everything that he talks about. For the preparation, we looked to our friend, the forager chef, this is Alan Burgo. If you haven't checked out his stuff, check it out. And fairly dependably, when there is a wild edible up here that I haven't cooked before, I can go to his site and not just find the basics of preparation, but he's going to have figured out something incredible to do with whatever the, the food is. So in this case, we followed his advice and I just altered things a little bit I'll show you how. And boy, it came out really, really delicious. The other cautionary element, though, is that 
Samuel Thayer has documented a number of cases of people having an allergic reaction. And it doesn't seem to be an anaphylactic reaction, but rather a, uh, how did he describe it? Uh, I think a stomach reaction where people were vomiting. And, and this gives people hesitation when trying this, especially because even though it is a low amount of people who will ever have this reaction, it's a high amount of allergic reactions for a given thing. So you have things like peanuts, which tend to have more allergies. And the hopness seems to fall into that category. It's a fascinating read in Samuel Thayer's book about why this could be, because this is one of the most documented uh, in the ethnobotanical literature foods of the native people of the United States. So wherever it was present, they were eating a lot of it. But for some reason, modern people, maybe it's just people with European genetics, a fair amount of us seem to either have this, well, actually to develop this allergy, because I don't think he's documented any cases where your first time trying it, you are allergic to it. I could be wrong there, but it seems in my memory that it was after people had eaten it for a while and then they would develop this allergy and after that they wouldn't be able to eat it. Still, I believe his current estimates are at about 5% of people that eventually would develop this allergy. He eats it all the time and I think it's worth the risk of possibly getting sick because this is a, again, an awesome wild edible. So come along today and we will go hunting for some of this. We are going out with some friends of ours, a whole mess of kids, and it's gonna be a fun time. Also show you how we prepared it when we got home. Seeing frogs off to the side, so much fun. Here's the environment to look for. So along these rivers, Mirabel, one of her friends way down there. You may recognize this place as one of our adventures, but we are looking for this. These twirling vines are last year's tendrils. I knew it! Right before the pine tree! <laughs> Here's the place where hopness grows! Here's the place where hopness grows! Here's hopness! And sometimes when you look right down in the dirt, we're going to see some little ones growing. What's that? Whoa! <laughs> Here it is. See these? So distinctive. And this is kind of neat because you can follow this up and you can see that whole length of it up from the vine down to these little tubers. This is a young one that's really firm. It's gonna have these white lenticels. Bring a little goodies. Like any good foraging trip, of course there's a lot more than just the hopness that we're getting. Getting all kinds of nettles here. Mmm, delicious. I mean, that doesn't necessarily bother yeah. me, but... So just... here is something I've never seen before. I don't know what this is. You can see they come in a wide range of sizes.
If you leave the ends on here, you make it easier to peel. It should be nice and white inside. Okay, Liliana. First time trying it? That's a little stringy, huh? It reminds me of peanuts. Of peanuts? Really? Um, do you like it or not? Yes. <laughs> Interesting. I'll try that one on. Yeah, that one's different. Like peanuts. I just but, strong scent. Peanuts. but not in a bad way. It's sweet. Mmm, it's sweet, isn't it? Mm hmm Yeah. Let's try this one. Mm-hmm. Let's try this one. Mm-hmm. That's good. It's kind of like boiled, sweetened, roasted peanuts. Or something. Mm -hmm. Peanuts. The thing I'm not going to show you in this video is what happened in the next couple days. And that is that these tubers are taken down and we planted them. And we are planting them along the riverbanks. These are a native plant, we're trying to reestablish them in our, well, this isn't our land, but it's some land that we are hoping to be sharing in a community sense soon. And I would say already are to a large extent. But we are hoping to develop some more permaculture or what Sam Thayer terms ecoculture, I believe. So taking a given area and bringing in wild plants that can create a diverse ecosystem, but also provide great wild edible resources for the humans that are part of that ecosystem. We'll be putting those in the ground and I'm hoping over the next few years that a really nice colony of hopness will grow there and we'll be able to harvest from that and just enjoy this beautiful plant, watch it grow in its native habitat. Thank you friends. Share what wild edibles you are gathering right now. There's all kinds of stuff coming up. I may do a little springtime video and just take you around and show you some of the things that are popping up out of the ground. Love this time of the year as all these little green friends emerge from the ground and we get to get reacquainted with them in their really young stages. It's fun to try to get to know plants from that first little green shoot that comes up all the way to the dead stalks that we see in the winter. It gives us a real intimacy with these plants. All right, can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments. I love to you all.